What is going on guys? We are back with another video today and we are doing a free agency video, kind of like a free agency recap thus far. Uh, I'm using this site called SportingNews.com because they uh, had the most up-to-date tracker that I could see that like looked kind of nice. So uh, that's what I'm using. As of uh, 740, it's got pretty much every big name, I'm pretty sure, that I can think of. Uh, of course, it's going to start with... Chiefs signing Joe Thune. Is it Thunny or Thune? I, I've struggled with this for so long, but uh, a five-year, eighty million. Also has some grades which we can, you know, like talk about and whatnot. But uh, the guy gives him an A plus, which I like the player. The money is super high, which I wouldn't say I, I don't like the money there because, I mean, that's kind of the way offensive linemen are actually starting to get paid. You know, everyone's always, oh, offensive linemen never get respected. Maybe like five, ten years ago, but uh, that doesn't exist anymore. Obviously, with these insane deals, you, know, you look at someone like Bakhtiari who's getting paid literally quarterback money at this rate. Obviously, a lot of these numbers may uh, it's it's a little bit of a 50-50 because this season, the salary cap kind of went down. But going forward, we expect to see a pretty big increase because of the you know potential 17 games uh, added on with the extra wildcard teams that we already had. Uh, but uh, I think I can't give this an A+, plus simply for the fact that the Chiefs lost two linemen. They didn't lose one lineman. They lost two. So... They paid Joe Thune, you know, double the price pretty much of each of their tackles in a way. You know, not not exactly because some of them were making some money. But, you know, in theory, they paid, uh, you know, one guy two player salaries and they need multiple linemen. It's not like they just needed a left tackle and a right tackle. They need more than that. Their, their entire line is kind of in shambles at this rate. I don't know if paying a guy that much money, especially... If I don't know if that's true or not, I know uh, he mentioned something about he would play tackle, but which tackle position? If he's not willing to play left tackle or he's not very comfortable at left tackle, that's an L. Like I'm not, I'm not paying a five-year eighty for a guard or a right tackle. And that's left tackle money. It's pretty much left tackle money, right? Uh, I I don't know. I can't give it an A plus. I'll give it an A minus because of course they did address uh, their biggest need. In a big way, but man, that money I think is a little too costly for a team that needs more than you know. Once again, just one guy. Uh, the Buccaneers re-signed uh, tight end Rob Gronkowski to a one-year ten. Uh, he was kind of slow starting on the year, mainly just a blocker. Which I mean, he obviously starts and finishes as a blocker, but uh, an A grade I think once again another a little too high. But if it keeps Tom happy, which I mean, I'm assuming it does because he just seems ecstatic to, to have the team pretty much back in business for next season. I know everyone was like, oh, well, the, the Buccaneers aren't going to be able to pay everyone. Well, they, I mean, they, they kind of are. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, I can't give it an A. I'd say a B plus. But a one-year $10 million, it's you know low risk. I would say high reward technically uh, as he obviously had some pretty good games down the stretch there specifically in the postseason uh, they also had some. I don't know if they're going to show the rest of it, but uh, the Shaquille Barrett one I think was a four-year seventy-two. That would be an A plus 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 in my opinion. The money's right. He's been dominant. He was, uh, in my opinion, the biggest factor for the Buccaneers winning the Super Bowl over Evans or Levante or Devin White. I know it was a huge team effort. It was a very uh, good team overall, but I would say he was the biggest. If you had to say who is the biggest one, I know you could say, oh, well, it's the quarterback, clearly, but you know what I mean. Like, obviously it's Brady. Anytime a team wins a Super Bowl, like 99.999% of the time, the quarterback's going to be the most inv valuable guy. You know, we're, we're not having that conversation. But, you know, we're talking about non-quarterbacks, you know, I don't know, dude. Whatever you want to say. Great move there, obviously. The tag for Chris Godwin, I suppose, is a good move. But, like, is Godwin going to be selfless or not? Because, honestly, the way the way he kind of played last season, he's a little inconsistent, man. Those, the Honestly, if I'm EA, I'm putting the drops open passes trade on him because that man was dropping passes left and right. And then, of course, I think Levante was a two-year 24, which is an absolute W there as well. So, Tampa... Uh, you know, as soon as Tom Brady comes over there, they like they're like five head GM mode, just absolutely dominating any free agent moves they need to make and offseason moves. Uh, the Jets, 
Corey Davis, three-year, 37.5. I feel like that's kind of low of a grade. A B grade? I would say that's probably like a B-plus grade. Now, I know wide receiver is not super, super hard to find, but for the Jets, it has been. It really has been. Like, literally the last decent guy they've had was Robbie Anderson, and even for them, he wasn't all that great. Uh, Corey Davis had a decent season last year. I don't really care about too much of the stats necessarily, but uh, looking at the way their scheme plays and some of the other names they had on their roster, he had a really good season. I think I think he's easily. I mean, I'm not. I don't think I know for a fact he's easily the number one wide receiver in New York now. But I think a three year thirty seven is a very good contract. I'd probably give that a B plus, A minus, honestly. And now we move on to the other move the Jets made, uh, signing Carl Lawson, a three year forty five. Uh, Carl Lawson actually had a pretty decent season. I'd say he's like above, slightly above average. He's about an average, above average pass rusher. A three year forty five doesn't really, you know, screw them over too hard for the future. Obviously, the Jets had a lot of money to spend, and you know, I think uh, I think that's fine. I think that's fine. I, I I do agree that you know these are overpays, but that's what the open market is. It's all overpays. There's no such thing as a, a you know an average you know a fair market value in free agency, right? That's the reason why it's it's free agency because they can go anywhere. They're always going to get overpaid. That's that's literally how it works. Uh, of course, Trey Hendrickson. That's a bit of an overpay. Of course, he had the like 13 or what is it, 14 and a half, 14 sacks. I don't even remember, but. Uh, ironically enough, it's funny because they they let Carl Lawson go, and the Jets sign him for the same price that they get Trey Hendrickson, which is interesting to say the least. Because uh, you know you have Carl Lawson on your roster for so long, both you know kind of similar in production. Like I look at these two guys, and I'm thinking, I wouldn't say the same player, but results wise, it's almost kind of the same thing, honestly. Um, but I suppose uh, they they looked at their their numbers. I once again I think Trey Hendrickson was more of a beneficiary of the players around him. So honestly, if I'm if I'm Cincy, I don't know why you don't just keep Carl Lawson if you're going to pay Trey Hendrickson that money anyways. Uh, I mean, I'd actually say they're about similar. Once again, in like if you were to say who's you know a top. 50 pass rusher I'd say they'd be like you know 45 maybe 44 something like that I can't really think of every single pass rusher on my list but you know that that and I would say I'd say both being a B is about fair I'd say maybe even B minus to be honest maybe not B minus for the Jets because the Jets have money to spend and they need pass rush but definitely a B minus for the Bengals for sure the Saints signing Jameis Winston I didn't think that contract was that high I gotta take a look see I think I think Jameis Winston's contract is more like five mil but he has incentives that are kind of hard to reach that can make it up to 12 million maybe that was actually mentioned here which I don't think it is so it's really interesting that uh the Saints are if I if I can think of the cap so obviously they've been doing some really weird shady cap uh, business but if I can think of the cap they're paying two quarterbacks one quarter starting quarterback's money like 20 some million it's very strange like uh Taysom's getting paid quite a bit there so uh b grade for a 5.5 million Jameis yeah I I guess I'd maybe say b plus just nah, yeah I'd say so considering the kind of money like Teddy Bridgewater and whatnot makes I don't know what Cam Newton's contract was I don't know if that'll be mentioned but uh speaking of the Patriots Kendrick Bourne for three-year 22. I don't see it. I don't know why. If you're going to pay Kendrick Bourne three-year 22, you might as well just save that money and just draft a guy. I don't get it. Nelson Aguilar, I think, is a little bit, I wouldn't say higher end, but he is better, in my opinion, than uh, Kendrick. So I'd say uh, Nelson's like a B- minus because I don't remember how much money it was, but a B- minus for Nelson and, yeah, probably like a, a C-, minus, maybe even a D- plus for Kendrick. I just don't, I don't see, like, I don't care how much money the Patriots have. These, uh, I mean, Nelson, okay, okay, he's all right, but Kendrick Bourne, it literally just reminds me of, like, a Nikhil Harry. I don't, I just don't understand. I don't understand what they're trying to get out of this. It's not crazy money, but it's a lot more than just drafting a guy, honestly. I just don't see it. Of course, they also signed, I don't know if this will be mentioned, 
but they signed Johnny Smith to a four-year 50, which I do like that because, I mean, this, the, the Patriots have always loved their tight ends, but they haven't had an athletic guy like Johnny since, honestly, probably Aaron Hernandez. I'm trying to think. Very similar builds as well. I mean, I, I probably uh, the Raiders signed Yannick and Gakwe. I'm trying to think of the Raiders' pass rush. I guess uh, uh, Clellan is just not going to be the guy there, which, I mean, I think a lot of people thought was – questionable draft pick anyways max crosby i don't even know if max crosby had a good season last year but if he did then uh yannick i mean yannick's a good player right i mean this this man has moved around teams so often yet he's still produced so yeah i mean i don't know how much that money is because it doesn't show it here but i'd say a b is pretty fair titan signing bud dupree this i don't think is a b at all the money they paid him i mean this is like a c plus in my opinion honestly like Bud Dupree, I think it was like a five-year 85 or something. It was ridiculous considering they got Jadavion Clowney. You know, they had Jadavion Clowney, and it really wasn't, you know, it wasn't anything special for them. Like, you'd, you've never heard his name. He was really like an underperformer. And I'm not saying Bud Dupree isn't, is an underperformer, but when you compare him and uh, Clowney, I mean, are you really going to say that that's much of an upgrade? Is it a... 85 million dollar upgrade i don't think so i think that's a c plus move from the titans if it was like a three year you know like 50 or something crazy money maybe but a five year deal i don't see it i don't like it i just don't uh leonard floyd he was actually pretty good for the rams i think that's a bit of an overpay i think a four year like 50 maybe you give it an a plus but i'd probably say a b plus maybe but obviously, having getting to work with Aaron Donald is just so different, right? It's just a completely different story because it's not like any other player. Like you know, you think about uh, someone ru rushing opposite side of Zadarius or someone rushing opposite side of. I'm trying to think of like the you know above mid tier, like the the like almost elite or pretty much elite players. You know, Aaron Donald's on another level, so like you can't compare it with. You know, having like a maybe a Cameron Jordan opposite side of him who's also really good, but like Aaron Donald just on such a different level, it's just insane. Uh, so I I don't know. I think that's an overpay. Once again, uh, this is kind of the open market, but is it? I mean, I don't know. Corey Lindsley, a five year sixty two for the Chargers. Now don't get me wrong, as a Packers fan, I wanted Lindsley on the team so bad, and I know you think that's crazy bad money, but it is the center position, so you have to look at. Are the Chargers really set that much on the offensive line to uh, to say that it was warranted to to fill the center position? I don't know. I'd say probably an A minus just because of the position itself. But obviously, Corey Lindsley is an absolute monster, and once again was ranked the uh, one of the best, if not the best, center for many many weeks last season. Now you go to Matthew Judon for the Patriots. I actually really do like this move. I think an A minus here. Matthew Judon has been pretty consistent over the years. I don't know if he had a bad stretch near the end of uh, last season or not, but he's always been one of the highest. Uh, what is it called? Pass rush contributors, like uh, pressure wise. And of course, it seems like anyone that's coming from Baltimore seems to have a pretty good season uh, following leaving Baltimore in free agency. So nothing more to say about that. A minus, pretty good stuff. The Browns. This I I think this is an A plus. I agree, A plus for sure. A three to thirty three for a guy like John Johnson, who we traded in our Rams league right away because he's slow. But slow doesn't matter in real life, right? The reason why uh, this is an A plus is because Cleveland has just had so many issues at safety. They've tried so many things. Uh, I mean, l the last decent safety move they had was what Jason McCordy playing free safety for him. They have just I don't know what it is. But Cleveland cannot lock down the safety position, and that's what they just did with John Johnson. Obviously, a very good signing. One of the better ones in free agency for sure. We already talked about the Johnny. I, I do like that move for sure. Uh, and I'm pretty sure he's a decent run blocker, right? I think he's actually pretty good. Uh, yeah, durability for sure. But, you know, a tight end with that kind of speed is is obviously very valuable. Shaquille Barrett, we already talked about a very once again. I think this is an A plus plus. It's probably the best signing of free agency. Uh, Roy Robertson, Harris, once again, guys in the trenches have been getting paid for the last couple of seasons. Yeah, I mean that's okay. Romeo Aquara. Uh, I mean, I feel like the Lions overpaid. I think a three or thirty would have been suffice, but apparently not. 
breakout 10 sack season. Yeah, I mean, I guess, but man, I feel like Detroit needs more uh, athleticism. I feel like their defensive line is just so slow, man. It just really is. Uh, Shelby Harris back with the Broncos, another kind of, I wouldn't say overpay, but kind of an overpay. There's not really much to say here. You know, he's returning to the team, not a huge name. Uh, it's really going to come down to what's what are the Broncos going to look like when Vaughn returns. Uh, Autry, uh, I think he was a Baltimore Raven. I mean, not much to say. It's a pretty low-tier signing. It's overpaying for sure. Ronald Darby uh, to the Broncos. A really nice signing for the Denver Broncos, actually. The only issue is uh, durability over the years. But uh, Darby actually had a pretty good season last year, so I like that. I'd say a B, yeah, three-year 30 for a guy that does have durability concerns. It's nice to see Darby did turn it around a bit. You know, it looked like his career was kind of coming to an end with the Eagles just having every cornerback possible injured. Uh, yeah, B's fair. Uh, a D. Ooh. Oh, let's see. What is this? Like a lame addition for the present workers. Yeah, uh, I mean, it's only a two-year six, so that seems kind of harsh. Let me see how good he was. I mean, he wasn't anything special, but with the way free agency goes, a two-year six isn't, like, it isn't bad. This is this is a type of signing that would, uh, I would have loved to see the Packers make instead of going for someone like Dylan. These are the types of signings that make you question, you know, make people question your GM skills when you draft a guy like Dylan. I'm not saying Dylan isn't better than Hyde, but the way we use him, I mean, unless we have a huge season planned for him, which he will have a way better season, obviously, but it's just like, why not? A two-year six, you save that second-round pick, and guess what you could have done? You could have drafted a center to dra to replace Corey Lindsley. You know, it's just, I don't know. Philip Dorsett, I, I do not know how much money this is, but it's got to be, these. that's got to be a decent one if he's going to put that as a D, um, but... Yeah, I mean, I don't see a D out of that. I'd say like a C, right? Like, I think that's kind of harsh. Uh, Texan signed Joe Thomas. Okay, that doesn't matter. Vincent Taylor, that doesn't matter. Terrence Brooks. Left guard, uh, Justin McRae. Malik Collin. Well, these are some very low-end names. Of course, Andre Roberts is uh, probably the best name on the entire list outside of maybe Marcus Cannon, who's on the older side. Yeah, this is uh, this is bad. <laughs> that is not, I don't know how much they paid, but the Houston Texans said, okay, our entire team sucks. We know that. What are we going to do? Probably overpay for a bunch of below average players. That is, this is, yeah, I, I mean, this is really bad. Shaq Lawson's okay. Marcus Cannon's on the older side. Uh, Christian Kirksey. It did, oh, yeah, the Packers did get rid of him, didn't they? You want to draft inside linebacker Green Bay? I know. I, okay, we won't. <laughs> is Deshaun Watson getting traded or not? Once again, I thought the best move for for Houston, or I didn't say the best move. I think the most realistic move was them to just work it out. Just, he, you know, it just happens. There's nothing else you can really do. Um, but yeah, this is, this is bad. That is not good at all. I don't know how much they paid, but you got to think all these names together collectively, how to be over 50 million, right? Like they, I would say over like, even if you add like this, or maybe like four mil, if I had to guess six mil, three, Six, five, six, four, four, four. You know, I I would assume. I don't know. Like uh, that's just what I would pay probably if I was going. If I felt like, oh, I need those players. Uh, but yeah, they. Huh. Uh, Dolphins trade for Bernardrick McKinney. I like that move actually. B. Uh, once again, seems like uh, when healthy. Yeah, I was about to say. Um, Injury concerns for sure, but what else do we have? The former Pro Bowler. I don't care about Pro Bowl. The former Pro Bowl. Uh, yeah, that's a good move. I'd say B+. Plus. I don't know what they had to trade for him, but you know, even if it's like a one-year rental, kind of like what Quan Alexander was for the Saints, that one probably wouldn't be uh, considered as good because that was an unfortunate injury situation, but that's a good move. Dolphins have had a, you know athletic, decent linebackers. None of them have seemed to really pan out so far, though. Uh, maybe like one guy, but that's about it. Uh, Niners re-signed uh, re Kyle Juszczyk. He's obviously really good for them. That's a good, eh, I wouldn't say it's a good contract, but he's a really good player for them. So I'd give it an A-. minus. I just think at his age, that could be a little costly for that position that, you know, no one really values fullback anymore. So 
I mean, would he gain anything on? I mean, he would gain. He's because he's so good. He would gain some sort of interest in free agency. But yeah, you know, you're not really bidding against too many teams, right? Like he's really good for him. So a minus. Uh, Jason Verrett. I'm not gonna lie. I have no idea what Jason Verrett was like last season. All I remember is he was good for the Chargers like one season. Biz has been injured ever since. Maybe he actually came back to the. I don't know. I guess. Uh, I mean, 5.5 mil on a one year for a team that needs cornerback is not a bad decision. So I'll say I'm good decision. I'd give it an A minus. Just based, I don't even know what he played like, but just for the money comparatively in the in the market, good decision. <laughs> uh, Kevin Zeitler. I don't know how this is only a B. I don't get it. I think this is an A minus at minimum. I really don't. I don't get it at all. The Ravens. They need linemen, specifically in the interior. They've had some injury concerns in general, but need linemen. That's a good move. I like it. A minus. A for Aaron Jones. I don't agree. As a Packers fan, I'd say I'd say B. B for the fact that the guarantees weren't that crazy. So, you know, maybe an A minus for the for the for the guarantees, but the Packers cap situation is pretty tight. They have a decent bit of uh positions to fill. Uh, Aaron Jones being on the roster didn't deliver them a Super Bowl. It actually may have costed a Super Bowl as he fumbled twice, losing one of them in a big situation, uh, and then getting injured in the championship round. Not that I'm saying, oh, one game defines you, but at the end of the day, Aaron Jones did cost us in that game, and... I'm not saying that he's not versatile. I'm not saying he's like a really good player. I keep highlighting that. I'm sorry. Uh, impulsive disorder or something. Uh, but I just think that running back is by far the easiest position to fill, right? It is by far the easiest position to fill. No one's going to argue that. You look at his receiving numbers comparatively last year to literally his teammate, Jamal Williams, exact dead even 7.6 yards per catch. And guess what? Jamal Williams is a lot slower. He's a lot slower. So is he really that versatile? I mean, he is, but I don't know. I mean, the numbers are kind of saying that maybe it's scheme-based. Dylan played really well when he came in for, uh, you know, when, when he was literally the only active running back on the roster. I don't know. I just don't I don't like it. I think you draft a third or a fourth-round running back if you really need a receiving, speedy, elusive guy. It's just too easy to find running back for this to be an A. It, it is. And I love Aaron Jones, and I'm going to root him on, and it's going to be fun to watch him again. But as far as the NFL as a business, you can't make running backs, uh, you know, top five guy. You, I mean, if you're a team that's trying to compete, I just don't think you can pay a, a running back top five money. You know, maybe if you're a lower-end team that needs any sort of talent you can get, sure, but I don't like that. Colts trade for uh, Carson Wentz, A minus. That was obviously one of the first moves. Some of these are some of the first moves. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Um, Lions move for sure. They won that trade, in my opinion. JJ Watt, I agree. Uh, third twenty-eight million. Was it that? I thought it was like thirty-two or something. Dak resigns for a four-year. What the Cowboys turned into, I'd probably would give it an A. We've been over Levante, definitely an A, probably an A plus. A plus as long as Godwin doesn't, you know, like hold out. Allen Robinson, I'm not sure why. Well, the thing is, if um, if they actually do re-sign him like they said they were going to, that that's definitely an A plus. Allen Robinson's a very good wide receiver. Uh, Taylor Moten, A, yeah, for sure, definitely. Especially a one year. If you can get linemen to sign one year deals when they're they're not in like 35 years old, that's a win. Uh, this definitely an A. Cam Robinson, yeah, I mean, I guess so, especially when you're going to draft quarterback. Not bad. Uh, Leonard Williams is pretty decent for the Giants, but, man, that's a lot of money. Uh, a plus, I would just re-sign him long-term. I don't know if they don't have the money. What's the story? Marcus May. Really? They're going to say he's an average player at this point? I think Marcus May is a pretty damn good player. I don't know why he's saying average. I think I think that's a B, easily a B, maybe even a B plus. It just really comes down to if Marcus May is happy to be there. That's really that should be the issue, not whether he's a good player or not. Especially for the Jets, that's strange of a of a grade. Uh, Marcus Williams, I, I might have called him Marcus Williams once because literally right here together, uh, the Saints, yeah, a minus. 
but yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, if there's some names that I forgot, I'm trying to think of any. Obviously, there's going to be some backup names. Like, I think uh, the, the Chiefs guard uh, might have went to some team. I can't remember. That wasn't mentioned here. It's not that big of a deal. Hopefully, the video wasn't too long. But let me know what you guys think. Let me know what you guys think of the grades. Was there was there one that I was completely off on because I underrated them or I overrated them? Let me know in the comment section below. If there's any names that I did miss, uh, let me know. Also, if there's some big name today like Juju or something go, comes off the board, I doubt I'd make like a video on it. Uh, unless, once again, if it's Green Bay involved in the thing. If it's a decent name and Green Bay is involved, I will because obviously I'm a Packers fan, but I don't expect that happening after after this Aaron Jones uh, re-signing. So uh, that's pretty much that. We'll have a Rams video later today, a double header game, and then second channel uh, PK Airplay should have the finale of Cyberpunk. Should be a stream also on twitch.tv slash PK around 10 p.m. Central Standard Time. So we cooking today, boys. Regardless, thanks for watching. Hopefully you guys come back in the next video, but until next video... See ya!